Woo! Who's ever heard this saying before? Don't ever play yourself. Who's heard that? Hand up if you've heard it, just so I can get a... Okay. Okay. DJ Khaled, don't ever play yourself. Congratulations, you played yourself. You never... No one's... Okay. Well, great, because we're starting on level ground tonight. Don't ever play yourself. Um, anyone here who knows me knows that I love me goring, and it has become a little bit of a running joke about how much I love me goring. It started off as a survival technique, and, um, but now I just love it. And the thing, thing I do with me goring is when I first open the packet, there's got to be some loose noodles. Like, I've got to be able to munch on some of the loose ones before I put the rest in the microwave. Is anyone else like that? Like, you've got to have a little, little pre-snack, okay? Again, I'm by myself in this situation. <laughs> but I, 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 love, I love having some of those, some of those noodles, just, just, I just gotta like. I just can't wait for them to be cooked. I, I gotta have a little bit right now. And maybe you're not like that with noodles, but we're all like that in some way. You know, even though the cooked noodles are better, they taste way better. They'll have flavouring on them. I just love, I just love taking a little bit for myself at the start. And uh, you know, we all do the same thing. We take what we can now, rather than waiting for what's better in the future. I've seen people who who they're shopping in Coles and they grab the Coke and they open it before they even get to the counter. You know those people? They just, they just cannot wait. I just, have to, I just have to start drinking it now. When I worked at Sam's Warehouse, we had to put a sign up on all of the um, things where the drinks were to say, do not open until you've paid because people would just drink it and then ditch it and then they would never pay for it. Um, anyone here eat the cookie dough before you finish cooking the cookies? Oh, I'm convinced, like, when they started selling cookie dough in little packets, they were trying to say, hey, we're trying to make your job easier, but they really knew that people were, like, going, half for me now, half for the oven, like, I, and some, some people just eat the whole thing while, before it's even been cooked, hey, well, I just got to take it now, even though, the, even though the cookies are so nice, you're just like, I'm going to take a little bit for myself now, this one might be, uh, some people might be embarrassed, but maybe some people still do it. Anyone, when you were a kid, used to, before your wounds were fully healed, you'd pick at the scab. Pick an, who's, a, who's a scab picker? Or, or you get sunburn and you don't leave it. You're just sitting there itching it and it just, the skin's going everywhere. And oh man, you look like you got dandruff, but it's just skin everywhere. <laughs> We've all done it in one way or another. We've all taken something now rather than having it later. And often in these decisions, we feel like we're treating ourselves, you know, like, oh, I'm just going to have a little bit right now. I'm just going to take this for myself, so delicious, or whatever it is. Um, but I've actually found time and time again that it's, we're not actually treating ourselves. Rather, it's more of an illusion to disguise the fact that we're actually robbing ourselves. We're actually costing ourselves something. It's just that we're not paying the bill until the future comes. You know, we're costing ourselves extra cookies that are coming later on. Whenever I used to stay up late at night and I'd be like, I just got to watch one more episode or I just got to play one more round of Xbox. I thought I was, I was just treating myself right now, but I was actually robbing the next day. Like I'll be so tired the next day. Like we think that we're treating ourselves, but we're actually, we're, we're actually playing ourselves. And, um, you know, I'd wake up the next morning and I, this is when I knew I played myself. When I was up so late one night, and um, I fell asleep in my chem exam and I completely failed it because it was worth that many points. And I was like, man, I just played myself. Congratulations. Man, I wish you guys had heard that. Congratulations, you played yourself. And, you know, we do it in many forms, one way or another. There's probably heaps of people here who have felt the brunt of buying the cheapest car that they could find because it's good for the wallet now. But then you end up paying lots of dollars for maintenance and parts in the future you know, maybe it's with a credit card. You pay nothing up front. You get the shoes now. You get the clothes now. But then you end up paying for it later. You think you get a good deal now, but you end up paying for it later. Sex before marriage. You know, this is something that God has for us. Sex is something that God designed for us to enjoy. But then, he, but then we try and take it now. We try and take it before it's time. And, and we actually rob our future marriage. Even if you marry the person that you have sex with before marriage, you're robbing the fulfillment of marriage. Same goes with porn. You're robbing your future experience of sexual intimacy 
that you're meant to have with your spouse and you're taking it for now and, and it feels like this is good now, but you're actually robbing something of your future. When you, whenever you take, your, take revenge out on a co-worker, you know, justice, you, you were probably going to get justice, you probably deserve justice, but you take it into your own hands and you actually rob yourself of character. You rob yourself of integrity, which is actually a really attractive feature. Whenever you want to be affirmed, you want to be liked, you want to be loved, you, you just take it now, you settle for double taps and you settle for likes on Instagram because it feels good right now. But then when someone comes along who can really affirm you, you can't receive it because you've built a habit of finding it elsewhere. You actually rob yourself. You want to be accepted, so you put up an image in front of everyone that feels good in the moment because people accept you right then and there. But in doing so, you actually rob yourself of self-confidence. You rob yourself of identity. And the, the action that we think we're choosing for our own good is actually only really good for now. And whenever we take something for ourselves before it's time, because quite often these things we will get in due time. These things are things that God actually wants for our life. Like I said, affirmation, um, sexual intimacy with someone. All of these things, they're stuff that God has put in our future. But when we take them before their time, it's never as good. The right now version is never as good. And there will be a bunch of us that are currently paying the consequences for taking the cheaper option, if I could say that, earlier on in life. And so often, you know, so often though, we don't realize what's in the future because, and we can't see the future cost that's ahead. We can't see what we're robbing ourselves of in the future. And maybe we wouldn't take the watered down version if we actually knew what was ahead. Because to be honest, like we got enough stuff coming at us day to day, hey. Like, I got enough problems for one day, let alone the last thing I need is my past coming back to bite me. And I wish that I could have the foresight for myself to, to have seen past the right now and seen how I might have been robbing myself in the future. I wish that I could have seen where some of my decisions would have led. But, you know, rather than sit here and wallow and dwell on the past, um, knowing this, I, I want to take a look now and no use you looking in your past and having regret. Let's just take a look at the future now. Let's take a look at what tomorrow holds. Let's take a look at the decisions that we have now. And that's what I want to talk about tonight, the decisions that we have now and ask the question, how can I make the best possible decisions for my life? How can I avoid being tricked into robbing my future? How can I stop myself from playing myself? Too often we blame so many other people, not realizing that we actually, we actually played ourselves. We thought we were doing good, but we actually played ourselves. So I've been journaling in Romans. Journaling is great, by the way. Get into it. And um, Paul is talking about our experience of salvation. Pastor Dean began to explain a little bit about salvation this morning. Um, but salvation is actually not an event. Some of us might have this idea that that's when we let Jesus into our hearts and we begin to follow God and we think of it as this event. But salvation is actually a process. And whenever Paul talks about it, he's talking about salvation as this process, something that's happening within us continually, constantly. And it's, and it's like it never actually finishes. It's this process that we're always undergoing. And um, this is what he says about it, Romans 8 verse 24. He says, for this hope, for this is the hope, sorry, of our salvation. Hope means that we must trust and wait for what is still unseen. For why would we need to hope for something that we have? I mean, that's co common sense. Why do we need to hope for something that we have? So he's saying salvation is not done yet. It's not all come to you. We still have hope because there's more to come. So because our hope is, is set on what is yet to be seen, we patiently keep on waiting for its fulfillment. And I love this idea that salvation has more to be outworked in our life. Just because you've made the decision to follow Jesus doesn't mean your story's over yet. Just because you've hit, no matter what point in your life you've hit, there's actually, there's actually more for you. I love the quote by Brian Houston. It's one of his most famous ones, which is, the best is yet to come. No matter what you've achieved, no matter how far you've come in life, good or bad, the best is actually still yet to come. And just like they named the latest Hillsong album and conference, there is more. That's just the, saying the same thing a different way. There's always more to come. We have a saying at Thrive Youth that the good times are ahead. Good times ahead. Don't worry about what's happened in your past because God's got some good things for you in your future. And regardless of what you're going through right now, I want to encourage you that something better is on the way. Because Paul says, hey, there's hope for what's coming. There's hope for what's unseen. That's the hope of salvation. You're not done yet. It's still going. 
And often we rob ourselves because we think that now is our only chance. But really, God has so much available to us in our future. And so tonight, I really think that there's some beliefs that I think we need to be able to grasp, to be able to make better decisions. And it's that simple, really. It's just beliefs. And if we can get a hold of a belief, if we can begin to believe something, if we can begin to change the way that we think, then when we come to make decisions, we'll actually, we'll just make way better decisions. We'll just make way better options because we see things differently. And the main thought that I want to get across to us tonight um, is that my potential is not based on what is seen. So Paul here talks about the hope for what is unseen, salvation, what is unseen. We hope for what is still unseen. And um, so we've got seen and we've got unseen. And, and that just means seen is just what we can perceive. Seen is what is in front of us right now. Unseen is what we can't really see. And not only what we can't see, but maybe what we can't even imagine, what we can't even try and construct, the images that we have, the imagination that we have. And, you know, there's a lot of things in life that we have trouble um, perceiving. And I remember coming through high school, um, I had a mop haircut. And um, I sent Ethan a text like right as I was coming up. Ethan, did you get the picture? Oh, we do. Hello. This is me and Damo. And that's my beautiful hair. Look at the circumference of that hair. That's a, quite a large circumference right there. And uh, my, I, I had a mop haircut. I, I had to find a photo really quickly, but um, it was even longer than Damo's. Like it used to come down and it used to fan out a little bit. And I had this, I had this mop haircut, right? And, um, and then it was my mum's wedding coming up. And my sisters were like, you have to change your hair. And I was like but this is what my hair's always looked like. This is all that I know. This is beautiful. This is amazing. Like, it covers my ears in winter, and I have so many styling options. And they were like, they showed me this photo. They're like, you need to get your hair cut like this. And I just couldn't see it. I was like, nah. Like, I can't, I couldn't even imagine it on my head. I was like, that would look so weird. But anyway, I have three sisters and um, no brothers. And so the majority ruled, and they convinced the barber Um, to cut my hair um, close to the style that I wear it in today. And I'm so glad that I changed. I'm so glad that my hairstyle advanced. And I'm sure, yes, so are you guys. But you know what? In the moment, I just couldn't see it. I was like, really? Like, but my hair is so good now. (laughs) And I'm sure we all feel the same on the cusp of a new fashion decision. Like, I don't know how that's going to look. But you look back at what you used to wear and you're like, oh my goodness. Like, I'm so glad that I moved on. You know, my hair had the potential to look way better. I couldn't see it. But I chose to go through with it. And, uh, you know, your potential in life is not based on what you can see now. What's in your future is probably not what you're looking at right now. You know, there's more places to eat other than Maccas. The potential in your life for healthy food is not limited to the salad options on the Maccas menu. The, I love the second part of verse 24. It says, hope means that we trust and we wait for what is still unseen. And that means I get to hope for what's ahead in life. It says, it, it says these words, hope, trust, wait. It doesn't say that fear, anxiety, trepidation. I'm not scared of what's coming ahead. And if Paul is saying, hey, there's, there's no fear in the future, he's saying you actually have hope for what's in the future, then that makes me go, I might not be able to see what's ahead, but, but dang, I know God's got something good for my life. Like, I'm excited. I don't know what it is, but I'm excited. It's like when a new Brooklyn Nine-Nine episode comes out. It's just like, I, don't, I got no idea what the episode's going to be about, but I've seen all the other ones. I don't want to watch the other ones again. I want to watch the new one. I want to get the one that's unseen. And that's like what, when God has something for your life, you, you just know, like, Uh, I I don't know what it is. I haven't seen it before, but I know that God is a good God by what He's done in the past. And so, man, I just can't wait to jump into this new thing. Man, that's what God is like. That's what Paul is saying here. He's saying that we have hope for what's ahead, what is still yet unseen. And so my question for you, do you believe that what is unseen is better than what is seen? Some of us don't. Some of us are just happy with the same old, same old. You think, think about your parents. You know, they still listen to the same music that they listened to ages ago. I was so happy when Pastor Chris started bopping his head to dubstep. 
Like back in 2010, we convinced him like, man, you, we got to play dubstep at Sunday night church. And he was actually enjoying it. And I was just like, man, this is not a guy who's living in the past. Like he's, he's really getting into it. Now he still pulls out country every now and again. And, and we have to say, no, no, no. But um, some of it's pretty good. He still loves dubstep. Good as. Hey, the point is, you got to believe that what you can't see in the future is actually better than what you can see now. you got to believe that God has a better job in mind for you. Because honestly, if you don't have that belief, you're just going to stay in the same old job. You'll never look for a new job. You'll just stay the same. You know, you got to believe, if you don't have a job, that God actually has a job for you. Don't just stick to Centrelink and, and handing out dodgy resumes. Hey, if you have a belief that God has something better for you, like you might not be able to see it. You might not know what job you're going to get. You might not know where it's going to be. But if you believe that that's better than what you have now, then that should fire you up to go, what? You know what? I'm going to update my resume. I'm going to put some fresh colors on the page. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to do something. I'm going to get out there. I'm going to hand some more out. You know, can you believe that what you can't see in the future, and so many people have trouble figuring this one out. That sex is actually best in marriage. So many people, and, I, and I've got to be honest, I, I don't know if I could even see it before marriage, thinking to myself, could sex really be that much better in marriage? And um, p- please believe me, the only people that can answer that question are the ones who waited and saw it on the other side and, and just like, actually, yes, it is. And it's so hard to see, but you've got to believe it, man, that what is unseen is better than what you can see now. That living God's way will bring about a good result in your life. You might not have followed God before. You might not have given God a try. But, if you, but you know, you've got to believe that what is unseen uh, can actually lead you to a good place. Because if you stick to what you see around you, the, pa- the patterns and behaviors of other people, you know, you're just going to end up destroying your life the same way that they did. You know, the boy that you're with now, he's not the only fish in the sea. If you stick to what you know, just this one boy, you know, you may never escape a relationship that's actually toxic. I'm just talking about guy, you know, like relationships that are unhealthy. I'm not saying if you've got a good man's, go and find another man's, you know. (laughs) I'm just saying, don't get stuck where you are with what you can see right now. Like, do you believe that Jesus actually has more for your journey? Do you actually, do you believe that? Because if you do, then I, I guarantee you, you'll start showing up at church every week. If you actually believe it, and if you don't want to do anything more than just show up at church every week, then I I want to question whether you actually have a belief that what is unseen is better than what's seen. Because otherwise, every single person here would be saying, hey, I want to serve. I want to get in. I want to do something more. Is there more than just rocking up and and standing here in church? Maybe those lyrics on the screen actually mean something for my life. Maybe I'm going to actually think about what they're saying and go, God, how can you move in my life today? Maybe you can actually close your eyes and go, why the heck do they sing these worship songs every week? It's because we believe they can change your life. Honestly, when God comes into your life, He can do something so great that you've never seen before. And if you're just sitting there happy with what you've got, you're never going to experience what's unseen. And you might be like, well, yeah, I've never seen it in my life. Exactly. I've never seen this happen. It's because you've never put your hands up, focused on God. It's because you've never prayed more than God bless this food. What's big and white, but you can't see it? A fridge around the corner. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. Hey, God has more for your life. Do you believe it? Are you willing to declare the unseen over your life? I may have a roadblock in my life right now, but just because I can't see past it, I believe that God isn't finished yet. I'm, I'm, I'm going to decide that I'm not going to peak at 18 or 21. I believe that I've got more in my life than I need to stick to what I have now. I know that just because I can't see it right now doesn't mean that it isn't coming my way. I know that what I have now is not the final fulfillment of my potential. Do you believe that? That what is in your life right now is not the final fulfillment of your potential and your destiny. Ephesians 3.20, Pastor Sue's favorite verse. So glad it's her favorite verse because I hear it all the time and now I just love it. Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. He is going to achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream and exceed your wildest imagination. Wildest imagination. Who's ever gone on a and and try to imagine something really wild. He's going to exceed that. 
He will outdo them all for his miraculous power constantly energizes you. Man, God is on a different level. Psalm says that God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. God is on a level that we can't comprehend. And, and I can't comprehend it, so I can't see it. But I've got to believe that it's better than what I can see right now. So my question is, are you willing and able to put your hope into that? Do you believe that what you have now is not the f- final fulfillment of your destiny? Verse 24 says, for this is the hope of our salvation. Hope means that we must trust and we must wait for what is still unseen. We must. For why would we need to hope for something that we already have? Hey, we don't hope for what we have. Don't hope for the same thing that you got yesterday. And, you know, Scripture doesn't say that when you become a Christian, you stop hoping. Salvation is a process. You're continually hoping because actually God continues to open up a whole new world and heaps of new doors for your life. And I think there's so many people that know how to complain, but maybe they don't know what to hope for. I hate my job. Yeah, well, what job do you want? Are you going to sit and complain about what you have and then just walk into the same job the next day and the next week and the next month? Can we reverse our complaining, our tendency to complain and actually figure out, well, well, what should I hope for? You know, you might be sitting there thinking, oh, I'm so nervous about this exam. Well, what mark do you want? Are you, why don't you pray for it? You know, sitting there going, I'm so fed up with my boss. Well, how do you want your work environment to look? Honestly, stop complaining and start asking God for what you want to see. And some people here might be going, you might even hear that and go, why would I pray for my, for my boss? Because, you know, he's never going to be any different. It's not going to change. Well, right there, you've just identified that you're not willing to peer into what is unseen. If you're going to sit there and go, it's probably never going to be anything different, then that's an area where you need to stop playing yourself. Because God says that there is yet more yet to be seen. There is unseen in the future. Are you going to walk into it? Are you going to choose to reach out and grab it? And so before I finish, I just want to really help us apply that. Because uh, how can we start to ask and start to hope for more? And I think that just simply comes from asking for more. So I want to get everyone here to just think for a second, what are you asking God for? For some of you, it's nothing. For some of you, it's just that God would bless the food in front of you. But you know what? The magnitude of what you pray for shows me what you're hoping for. So do your prayers reveal contentment and disappointment or do your prayers reveal hope? Uh, are, you, are you just complaining to God about where you're at? Are you hopeful for what is ahead? Because if all you pray for is for God to bless your food, then you have very low hopes. What about the exam you have next week? What about the girl that you're going to take on a date this week? Man, you need, you need God to give you confidence. What about the job that you want? What are you unhappy with? Are you willing to believe that there is more? And, and even more than that, what are you actually, what are you okay with? I'm okay with this in my life. Well, guess what? There's actually more. There is unseen in every territory of life. There is more that God has for us. So even what we're content with, are we willing to ask for more? Like, I, I, love, I love seeing our financial advisor because we, Hannah and I, we, we both have solid income and we're quite happy and it pays the bills. But he's like, hey, are you believing for more? You know, do you, do you actually believe that God can bring more financial blessing into your life? Man, when we, need to, we need to believe for more, even the things that we're happy with. So what is an area of your life that you feel like all the doors are closed in? Because I think the best areas to pray into our life are the areas where we feel like we've seen it all, where we feel like it's done, it's over, it's finished. Because God has something that maybe we haven't comprehended. God has something that maybe we haven't seen before. Maybe the doctors have said that there's no treatment for what you have. Maybe your work is saying that there's not enough jobs coming in to sustain that many employees. Maybe you just feel like you don't have what it takes to make it through this season of life. Hey, don't don't ever play yourself. Open your eyes to the infinite possibilities for your life. And the flip side to this is verse 25, where Paul says, you know, because our hope is set on what is yet to be seen, we have to patiently keep waiting for its fulfillment. And that's, that's the part that kind of sucks, that we have to wait. God has so many great things for our life. And I hope I've encouraged you tonight that there is actually more for your situation. To not ever settle for what you have. Hey, never settle for what you've got going around you in your life. But actually believe for more. 
And just because it doesn't come in a day doesn't mean it's not on the way. Just because you can't see that fridge around the corner doesn't mean it ain't there. Believe that the unseen is better than what is seen. Believe that what you have is not what you're destined to have forever. Be prepared to wait for fulfillment. And don't take for yourself now what was meant for later. Can we all stand? I want to pray for us before we leave tonight. Because I truly believe that there is more for every single person here. I truly believe that what you're seeing in your life right now is not the end. That is not the pattern that you're going to live by for the rest of your life. What you see in your day to day, that is not the blueprint for your future. God has something bigger and better for each and every one of us, whether that's in an area that we're struggling with or even in areas that we're excelling with. That's why I think it's so important that we make a decision right now to respond to God. Because no matter what part of the journey you're on, there's something more for you. So can everyone just close your eyes right now? And uh, I just want to pray first, particularly for an area where maybe you feel like you've robbed yourself in the past. You're paying the, paying the price for it now. Or, or maybe you just find yourself continually just making bad decisions that just keep coming to bite you back. And you just want to get God's vision on your life, that you'd be able to see what's ahead so that, so that you can make healthy decisions. If that's you, if you want to make healthy decisions, can you just raise your hand? I want to pray for you right now. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Awesome. You can put your hands down. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Anyone else? Twenty, twenty-one. Yep. Awesome. God, I thank you for these people who are choosing to make a stand right now choosing to respond to you right now. I pray that this week, your Holy Spirit would be with them, guiding them, Lord, whispering to them, helping them to see what they have ahead, what you have ahead for them, Lord. I pray that you'd help all of us to make healthy decisions this week, to be able to see the more, to see the unseen. And even when we can't see the unseen, God, give us the courage to hope and trust in you that you're gonna be bringing it into our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Just keep your eyes closed right now. I want us to take stock not just of our decisions, but just of our journey as a whole. I want to provide a moment for you right now where you can say that you want to begin following Jesus. Or maybe you've followed God before and you just want to come back to Him tonight. You know, like I said, I truly believe that God has more for each and every one of us. And I know it to be true because that's how God designed it from the beginning, that when we would walk with Him, when we would do life with God, that we would live life and life to the full, as Jesus said. We were designed to do life with God. But then whenever we make decisions for ourselves, whenever we, we, we trust our own judgment, generally we end up in strife. We end up making mistakes. We sin, we, we have bad thoughts, that sort of stuff. And it pulls us away from God. Sin separates us from God. But I love that Jesus loved us so much. He could see what was ahead for our life. He could see the future, the potential, the destiny for each and every one of us. So he decided that he would make a way for us to live with God again by coming to the earth and dying on a cross. And all that it takes for each and every one of us to begin walking with God again is faith and trust. That we would just have faith in God that His future for our life is better than one we could concoct by ourselves, and just trust that we would, we would actually choose to put our life in His hands. And if you want to do that tonight, if, if you want to give your life over to God, if you want to say, God, take the reins, then this moment is for you. And again, I just want to pray for everyone. There was like 20 people before, and I have no doubt there's going to be more people right now. So everyone just keep your eyes closed. And uh, can I just, can I pray for you right now? Can you just lift your hand so I can see who that is? And then I'm going to pray for you. Awesome. Yep. Awesome. Thank you. You can put your hand down. Anyone else? Doesn't have to be the first time you might be coming back to God tonight. If that's you, just put your hand up. I'm going to pray for you. Some people already. Cool. Well, God, I just pray for all those people who are making that decision now, whether they put their hand up or whether they make that decision in their, uh, in their heart, God. I just pray that you'd be with them this week. Lord, that you'd help them to follow you, that you'd help them to hand the reins over to you. And when stuff starts to feel really hard, that they would be able to 
uh, call out to you, God, that I would know who to call to. In Jesus' name, amen. And uh, just to finish off, we're all going to pray this prayer. We're going to pray it out loud. We're going to pray it together as a family. And if you made the decision just then, hey, be praying this from your heart. Be really meaning these words as you say them. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, I believe in you. Thank you for forgiving me. Come into my life and I will follow you. Amen. Well, thanks everyone. I hope that this week we would be able to see the potential that God has for our life, even though we may not see how things are going to work out, that we would believe that no matter what it is, I know that it's going to be better than what I can currently see right now. Thanks, Matt.